Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the internet, I believe. And let's have a little look at some more C++ code. So, there we are. Now, for anyone who is watching this on YouTube, you'll be quite surprised. Uh, everyone who isn't, yeah, I had to do that bit a second time. Oh, well. I'm leaving that. I'm not cutting anything else out. So, we had a bit of an issue where, let's go into 64-bit mode. Uh, and under debug under a debug build up here, everything seems to be all hunky dory, nice and fine. And indeed, if it decides to build, ah, uh, yeah, I've swapped architectures, so it might take a while and have to build everything. Generating code. Oh, it's doing code gen. Yay, lovely. Okay, so that's in. It's working. Hubblebot is now online. If I type exclamation mark high in the Twitch chat you get a high chat with... Oh! Ha! Hubblebot no longer has a sub. Maybe I should have checked that. Um, let me quickly go and gift Hubblebot a new sub. I probably ought to set that one up as a, an auto-renewal, you know. But that would mean setting... Oh, hang on. I can do it this way. Right, let me go... To... Uh, what's the easy way to do this? Am I following anyone from the Hubblebot account? I've got the Hubblebot account up on um, on Twitch here. Right, there we go. So, let me quickly resub that on that paid tier. It's going to ask for all sorts of nonsense, isn't it? Which is one of the big reasons why I'm doing this on a completely different screen. Anyway, the bot is working. Um, the fact that it's not subbed is a problem that I'm fixing right now. So it's not showing up the actual emotes, it's only showing up the text of the emote. However, let's stop this again and try it in release mode. Now this is a release optimised build, so back to a normal release build rather than the um, removal of optimization that I did before. That's important for important reasons. So, let's give that a go, shall we? So, it's back online, um, exclamation mark, hi, and it works. Have I fixed it in this build? Have I already done it? Uh, let's go to the parser, let's go to the actual parser, let's go... No? Okay, I don't think I've got this working on... I think I've got the release build um, back on optimised, haven't I? Why is this not working on my other machine? Let me turn that off on there. Um, okay, do that. Do what you want. Hit that button. Okay, so... What have we got for optimizations? Um, CC++, optimization, and maximum optimization? Um, that's confusing. Okay. Um, so, my actual question now is why did that even work? Uh, Maybe it's not always that it doesn't. Okay, let me try this again on the other machine. Because I can do two things at once, I promise. Hey, I get a pop-up. That's always handy when I get a pop-up. Well, when I get the right pop-up anyway. Hi there, Blade Hop. How are you doing? Uh, apologies for the start of the stream. For anyone that doesn't know, the start of these streams usually goes one of two ways. Either it goes by the script, in which case it, it looks almost smooth, or it goes as it does today, with me doing all sorts of nonsense that's not properly working. Um, both are entirely possible. Today we're getting the um, start of a stream where I've gone, uh, 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 this should work better than it is doing. Okay, so we've now got, I think Hubblebot's now got a sob. Uh, Hubblebot is stopped for now. Evening, Minxy Rose. How are you doing? Uh, hoping everyone is well. 
Now, let's rebuild the whole thing. I'm, I was hoping that this would actually die rather than work. Uh, well, I haven't put the fix in this version. I only did the fix on my laptop because I wanted to live stream the fix. However, if it's working without the fix, it's a problem. Um, so we're back online. Hi all. Just stick that in there. Well, at least Hubblebot's got its emotes back. Why is that working? I, I know this is... Oh, hang on. Have I fixed it in the other place? Message pass... No, I haven't actually done the, the fix, you know. Um... Ah, there we are. Excellent, Mingsy Rose. Thank you. So... Trust this to make a liar off me. Right. We were having an issue. And I ought to have checked it on this machine again. But we were having an issue where this parcel, where we were failing on this pass line. Um, I'll tell you what, let's go back to x86. Let's fire the release build up again. <clears throat> ah, yeah, and it's doing the pre compiled header, it's compiling that from scratch this time. This is very confusing. Oh, anachronism use. Oh, I'll, I'll have a look at that in a moment. There we go. Bang. Right. This was what I expected to see, everyone. This is the error I was expecting to see. And if we go up the stack to, let's say, there, it's us passing that message. Now we can do something about it. So let's let's do the actual fix, which is that, messy, that these can't be auto. We cannot make message parser, we can't make the parsers autos. What we can do, however, is deep clone them. Now, I found this out on Stack Overflow. All my tags have disappeared, haven't they? Yay, no tags, hang on. Programming is a tag on here. We also are backseat allowed. We are software development. We are, why did the update information button not work? Um, AMA, why not? Stick it in there for a laugh. Um, educational, I suppose to some degree we are. Let's stuff that in there. So let's go across to um, somewhere. Let me go boost spirit. I know you can't see what I'm doing right now. Um, But that's fine. I'm I'm more than happy with that to some degree. Um, auto optimize. Essentially, I want to see. Right, hang on. Hello. This looks good to me. That is probably the question I saw this on. Um, and essentially, if we have a look in Boost, um. <clears throat> We have to use something like Boost Spirit Auto. Or we can do Boost Proto Deep Copy. Now that's the version I saw. So the canonical workaround is that. So let's have a look at this way. This isn't how I fixed it on my laptop. I did the actual one. Uh, search for that. How to use Boost Spirit Auto rules with AST. Okay, let's get the C, let's get the, what's it there? So, it is actually just a deep copy of its own right. Um, okay, so domain is supposed to be, what's domain supposed to be here? Um, boost Spirit, whatever, so that would be QI or Chi. Um, let's have a look at what this was saying. So it was saying Anna. Hmm. The other thing we'll do, let's, let's do the Boost Proto Deep Copy for now. And then we'll try and show what's happening. So the message pass is actually a deep copy of all of that. Um... 
And again, we need to be doing deep copies here. Cool. So why not do a using on this lot? Because I, it just looks nicer. So we're using the deep copy multiple times. Let's declare that we're using that. And we should be on a winner. As in, if I try this again... And yes, I, I'm sorry, you probably can hear my washing machine going 10 to the dozen in the background. Um, that's unfortunate. Wow. Hmm. I'm just thinking future plans. That lamp really does need to get out of the way on streams anyway. That would be better, I suspect. Cool. So we now do that. If I try and get a random number... It now happily gives me the canonical random number of four. Uh, Minxy Rose can only hear the washing machine. Oh, well, I'm not going to speak louder. The problem is I can't shut any doors between the room I'm in and the washing machine because there are things in the way, um, i.e. a sofa. Where's your random number? I'll tell you what, Minxy Rose, now that I've bought the bot back online, go for it. Get yourself a random number. You know how to do it. Exclamation mark random. Uh, voodoo, that is a mod only command. Exactly for that reason. Um, welcome back anyway, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, only mods are allowed to use the horn at the moment. Just because I, I don't want it going off all the time. And it is only really there to be used when... In, in the right circumstance, let's say. And yes, we've still got the welcomes from Nightbot. Now, shall we have a look at shouting, at uh, doing a warm welcome thing? So I wonder if we can overload hi to go something like hi, um, Minty Ro. Well, let's do it for Voodoo. Voodoo 32. So I'm wondering if we can make the bot respond to that hi command that, well, I'll show it up on somewhere you can see that command there. Or the one directly above my head now. And then Nightbot comes in. Okay. <clears throat> but the first thing, at least we've now got that one fixed. We've got the deep copies in. Now, something that was interesting was... Notice how we use that pattern. So it's one followed by a list of whatever. Now, actually, I believe there to be another way of doing that. If we go boost spirit, uh, spirit, let's see if I can type, and go for uh, list parser, there is a way of parsing lists. What is Fusion Vector, Voodoo32? Um, Fusion Vector is something around... Um, where are we using it? We're using it there. It is essentially a... From Boost Fusion... From what I can tell, it's a topple, actually. It's a Boost Fusion Vector. Um, don't know why we've got that there. Why we haven't got the boost in there. Oh, yeah, because we're namespacing it there. Okay, cool. So, yeah, it's from Boost. And if I sort of show some docs for that quickly. Um, boost Fusion Vector. Yeah, so it's a random ac access sequence of heterogeneous typed data structure simpled as a, structured as a simple struct. So, it is essentially just a structure of tuple. Really? Um, but obviously, Boost uses everything Boost because Boost. And Boost, and don't forget Boost. So that's where that all comes in. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's more a... It's closer to being an actual vector than a C++ vector. Is. So we've got a list parser. What does a list parser do? Well, have a look at that. 
Um, Voodoo, the simple answer there, that is because um, it's the way that Boost is doing things. And to be fair, that's a... Each of the vec each of the inter inside vectors is a string, basically, a sh character. So, yeah, Fusion Vector is essentially the tuple, as Fuel Snable's saying. So, what we've just done, hang on, that's A... A percent B is equivalent to that, yeah? If I were to sneakily put that, let's say, there, you'd probably see a bit of a passing resemblance to what we're doing. So, in essence, we could just do that whole thing in the deep copy. Um, we could wrap it all up again and say that we're doing that with a percent sign and that semicolon in there and now that's the whole parser in one go um just to recap because i know that fuel snable will be interested in this and i think you missed the start of the stream we have fixed the live issue fuel snable um the release issue and it was simply that you can't use auto with a parser on its own, apparently. So what you need to do is use Boost Proto Deep Copy. You can also use um, Boost... Oh, gosh, have I still got this open? Um, boost Spirit Auto. So, yeah, there's a macro there. that does it but we're just in the deep copy because that did kind of work for me um i suspect that you could probably do i mean instead of that i think it's essentially this as the syntax um boost spirit auto that with that and then that's apparently undefined so we need to include well, that's a heck of an include. Um, it's actually closer to being this, if I remember rightly. Um, I'm sure there are multiple reasons why that's the case. Um, why is that saying it's undefined still? Um, ah, no worries, Voodoo. Don't worry about it at all. Just hope that your voxel engine is going well. Now, let's see if that compile is actually going to get rid of this error. I don't know if this is the right thing. No. So, we'll we'll stick with... Oh, hang on. Let's have that back up to 100%. So, we'll stick with the deep copy version of it. Essentially, that Boost Spirit Auto just does the deep copy. And it is a boost thing. Uh, NTW Games, will I still stream C++ in 10 years from now? And by the way, hello to you. It's weird seeing someone say good evening at what's about uh, 20 past 8 at night. Um, I don't know what I'll be streaming next week, let alone in 10 years. I mean, let's face it, we've pretty, I'm pretty much not streaming much F-sharp after starting up 6 months, 8 months ago, streaming exclusively F-sharp. I mean, we will be going back to that, that I do know, but no, I, I can't make any promises as to what I'll be streaming in not many years, let alone 10 years. I mean, in 10 weeks, it's a struggle. So, yeah, I mean, that really does explain why it blows up in GCC. I believe it'll also blow up in Clang, it'll blow up. It, it, it's a quirk. It's not an MSVC um, issue. So that's cool. Um, yeah, so that's the Fusion Vector. Um, we've got over the it's not playing nicely. Let's do a rebuild just to get rid of these errors that I think are still lingering that shouldn't be lingering. Um, Voodoo32, I should start my own voxel engine after this and stream myself learning and making it. Um, I'm not... I, I don't fancy the idea, to be fair. Um, Fuel Snable. C++ will be around until it's replaced by JavaScript. Um, maybe. The thing is, 
JavaScript running on bare metal, that'd be funny to see. And to make the joke, isn't JavaScript basically now just a compile target these days? And with WebAssembly coming out, isn't JavaScript going to... It's not going to disappear, because, let's face it, but it, it's becoming less and less relevant. Go on then, ANT Double Games. What language should I use for a voxel engine? Let's have the trolley answers first and then the genuine one, but let's let's have a laugh. What do you think I should uh, use for that? <laughs> QBasic. I walked into that, didn't I? Um, if you want to see something done in QBasic, with, I'm not, no jokes here, but doesn't Bisquit do quite an amount in CBasic? Um... I want to make sure that I've got it right. It is Bisquit. Um, I think he does a good amount of um, QBasic or something in uh, as a way of um, showing off some of the early stuff. Um, if you, yeah, WebAssembly does have to become relevant first. I think the big thing is. Actually, as much as I said it might replace JavaScript, that was a joke, to be fair. I don't ever see it replacing JavaScript, but I see it augmenting JavaScript really, really well. Um, really, because there's more and more stuff out there to, to work with. Um, sounds like there's one or two interesting things going on. Hang on, I don't know. Can I, can I do things... Um, okay, and apparently that sender message didn't just send it to the right, right person. Okay, the right person knows who I was sending that message to. I might need to take a break in a moment. Um, a few things are being a bit interesting. In fact, do you know what? I am going to have that break now. Um, I'll see everyone in a few minutes. I don't know exactly how long. I think it'll be a couple of minutes, maybe five minutes tops. Uh, see everyone shortly. Apologies for the delay, everybody. Uh, I'm back now. Let's catch up with some chat, shall we? So, um, yeah, kitchen is now unbroken. Um, it is fixed. It was fixed with a little bit of C++. plus plus. And not with QBasic. Um, looking for the knives? No, it was it was more a it was more a things tumbling down issue. I think it was a bit of a stack overflow, uh, more an imbalanced stack. But there we go. So <clears throat> BBC Basic, yeah, that had renumbered. Um, so did Sinclair Basic, I think. Um, because I didn't have a BBC Micro, I had the ZX Spectrum series. Well, I had the Amstrad built one, let's be honest. Yeah, you got to balance your stacks. Uh, yeah, we just had a slight, uh, slight, slight instance of stack smashing. Um, nothing, nothing too serious. Anyway, shall we, um, shall we crack on? Oh, NTW Games, yes, sub and head and sub. Oh, yes. Um, you could play with small basic as well. I think any basic is going to have sub and end sub. Um, I just think that's a basic thing. <laughs> Hope that came through. I need to get a daft sound effect for that. ABC80 basic. I don't know that one. Okay, so we're back. We've done the deep copying stuff. Um... Where I was probably about to go, no fuel snable, I'm not here all week. I, I try and disappear after making jokes that bad. Oh, what's this moaning at me about? No, that can go away. Um, next thing, what you'll notice is at some point we go, well, we've got this two string, which is cool. And where do we use it? We use it there. So... That value is there. No, that is used. I was going to say, because the attribute list for at as 4 
yeah, doesn't need the to string. We don't need to convert the attributes to a string to get them back. And I now don't think that we need this to be particularly public. So the parser.h file can remove the attributes for, because hey, we're just doing parse message. Um, I don't think that will break anything, will it? Let's do a rebuild. If it doesn't, then we can make that attributes for take something slightly different. We can make it take a... Um, oh, what's it? Make it take the um, vector of characters. So yeah, that's, that rebuild succeeded. So in the parser, why don't we make that take a... Um, well, let's do it the other way. Let's go stud vector uh, of char const reference attribute list. Um, at which point that still all works because that's using the iterator. However, to string um, shouldn't be that much of a problem. Um, we should be able to take that to string out and avoid essentially a cast. So let's give that a go. Let's build it. We're going to build it in release mode for now. I'm probably going to move back to debug mode in a minute, but I had already clicked the button. Hubblebot online, so if I say hi to everybody from Hubblebot, it will reply hi chat and be absolutely happy with that. Um, yes, fuel stable. Um, I'm literally moving them as we as we go through. So that's another one. Um, I think you and I, fuel stable, are pretty much the only two people I know of that are doing it this way. Um, everyone else does seem to use const something ampersand. So I don't know why that's uh, why why everyone does it the um, other way. I must admit, I am getting to the point where I am preferring putting the const here. However, it is all personal preference. Um, so that's all of those moved here. These autos, yeah, I'll, I'll keep the autos about the place. Um, ah, we're, we're, we're not the only ones, but within the minority. Cool. So we've got const placement there now. Um, make component that's not ours. PCH is, but I know that that's not got the main command repository. H. Yeah, you see that's got the const ampersand. Can I put the spaces in and leave them there? I quite like the const afterwards. I like I like a space between const and reference. It's a string. It's constant and it's a reference. Uh, and then yeah, we've got the decal type there. Um. So, yeah, again, where do I place the const? Well, I place the const there when I'm making a method. Um, I go type const. So type const always seems to be a good way of doing it. Um, are you half now NTW games? So hang on. Uh, sorry, I need to catch up with some chat, don't I? You think it's inevitable that I write a book about programming history. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news on that one, but no, I am not writing a book. I can't do that kind of stuff, and I have no intention of even... Yeah, I, no, 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 no. <laughs> even people that think they can write a book after they've done it go never again. I know I can't, <laughs> so no point me even trying that. Um... Interesting terrain, Voodoo32. Um, how are you generating the terrain? Are you doing something similar to Perlin Noise? Um, coffee swigs. I'm sure more coffee will be required soon. So hang on, what are we doing there? Ah, yeah, that was the funny constructory stuff there. So let's do this. Um, okay, so we've now got something interesting where the commands are essentially the same type as the user attributes. That feels a bit ropey to me. 
um, shall we change the user attributes to be something a little bit more interesting? Let's suggest that we go down that route. So the parser at the moment creates a user attribute, which is a standard map of string string. Let's suggest that all of a sudden we should have, let's say, a new class. Let's have a class wizard. Um, let's say it's going to be... Oh. Now, I don't want the class wizard. Let's, let's do add class. Let's do it that way. Um, user attribute. Well, surely it should just be user at that point. And we'll, we'll we'll do something about this a bit more. But that's just going to be a user. Um, and a user will have public constructors. For now, let's say private. Um, and that can be a std map of std string to std string. Um, we'll call that attribute. Now, here's the thing. I'd rather not have the constructors work publicly. In fact, why don't I tell that? Stick it there. And what I'd actually prefer is a static um, from... Attributes and that's going to return us a user. I don't know if I'm completely fluffing this or not, and it's going to be a stirred string. Well, yeah, this is where we go back to changing to a string, so it's going to be a standard string of well const ref um, attribute list or at a list and now we're going to get a user back and the reason that I'm going private normally I'm not huge on private variables but to be fair I do want to start extracting stuff out properly um, I'm using the encapsulation backwards um, what we're doing at the moment is I want to go and um, build, I want to change the structure of this object without breaking things. I actually do want to do that because while we've got something dynamically typed, essentially instead of pulling stuff out um, by searching through the map, I want to insert stuff into the class. Um, into the attributes a different way. I want to have separate attributes. I want it to be a lot more, a, a lot more object-like. I'm, I'm going to start trying to embrace objects in this. I'm still, as you notice, I'm still not designing around objects, but I think an object's falling out here. I think this needs to be one to some degree. Uh, Mingsy Rose, we've already got past the bit where I fixed it. Uh, I fixed the problem. I could. I. I always could remember how I did it. To be fair, um, of course, we need to include string. Why can't it just include string there? That makes much more sense. Okay, so from attributes not found. Well, let's shut the signature in there, and let. Play. So the parser now, essentially I want to make the parser itself disappear because it looks a bit pants to me. I want to change this. So attributes for returning a map. Okay, we can steal all of this. Let's cut this out completely and see what we get. Um, into the user... Um, Let's get rid of that part of it. Reformat everything. Um, user attributes results. Well, user attributes now needs to not exist as well, doesn't it? Um, let's see, where was that stored? That was stored up there. We don't need that anymore either. Cool. 
and that can just be user user for now or twitch user actually let's do it the other way around let's have the type as twitch user um so twitch twitch user go on you can do it i have absolute faith in this and i don't know why um apparently i have faith because it kind of worked it didn't rename the files for me which is a bit of a shame but let's do that uh yeah this is very much the um unscripted part and that needs to be twitch user as well and all should be good again in the world stub map uh yep yeah, let's include that as well um is it going to come in okay i'm hearing things go bang again that's not good you know add it okay it's taking longer now why is visual studio taking longer to do what i'm hoping it will do tell you what would you all like chair stream for a couple of minutes while visual studio does her bad all right you can all have the chair behave don't ask the chair nasty questions be nice to the chair okay chair stream Ah, there we are. Did the chair behave? Yeah, of course my chair behaved. Of course you behave, chair. Ah, that was the bang I heard. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I feel so. Right, Visual Studio's been ridiculous here. Um, I'm clicking cancel. Really. That's the big part of the problem, so I'm going to have to actually just... Oh, here we go. Let's do it this way. Um, processes, apps, that one, and the task. If Visual Studio 2019 doesn't behave, I will do it with, I will use, don't recover. Yeah, Blob, I'm with you there. I don't get that one. Um, let's go back to where we were. Okay, um, uh, uh, files exist, don't they? Add existing item. That one. Add existing item. That one. Right, and I will rename the Twitch socket ones as well. Uh, good evening, Turbonautilus. I'm not fully recovered, but hey, I'm close enough. So, yeah, um, includes can do all sorts. Oh, yeah, do, do, just, just do as you're told, VS, please. Once, maybe, because we're now, you know, using a different naming setup. Um, Sorry, I do have to fix this reasonably quickly now. I have slightly nerd, nerd sniped myself. Um, okay, so we've got that done. That socket stuff will let, let lie for now. There's there's work to do there. Um, Twitch user dot h looks to be semi reasonable. Let's include map. Yeah, Voodoo, having no features might not be a bad thing, though. Um, sometimes features break. Is the unfortunate truth here. So, why is this crying? Uh, must be a class or whatever name or namespace name. That's just called user at the moment. Okay, um, that can now be a Twitch user. 
Okay, that's now slightly happier, I think. Um, we're we're still gonna have plenty of errors. Let's let's do a bit. Let's do builds frequently, and see what issues we're having. Rather than trying to do this kind of off the top of our head, so that needs to be called Twitch Shocky correctly. Um, user there or well, that shouldn't have a problem except it will until i add the include include added uh missing type specifier that one's gone away now ASCII is not a class or namespace name i agree because we need to do um using namespace boost here to make that work um that could now give us problems. Let's go back to the parser and see what we did in this parsery bit here to make that work. Ah, okay, so let's do those instead. Um, and just dr try and drag one across at a time. So back to our Twitch user dot a uh, dot cpp. Let's not do using namespace boost. Let's do that instead. Um, Let's say the user attributes results, or well, that's now just. Um, well, we don't need that because we've got a private thing called. Hang on, what's it? Where is it? It is. It's called attributes. So, in fact, let's just go result first, then rename it to attributes. And see if Visual Studio has, is clever enough to make this work. Um, oh, hang on. Let's see. No, renames are not going to work nicely. So, attributes there. Attrib why are we not getting that that's apparently not a variable i'm going to disagree with that um the two string yet yeah, we still need that um let's grab let's grab a copy of it knowing full well that that's what we're doing um and that we're being a bit naughty by doing this but hey ho we can fix that. Attributes is still moaning. Static. What's static? Um, Twitch user attributes should not be static. Ah. Of course. Um, this is static, however. And yeah, we don't stick that there. So that's from attributes. So that means that we don't get attributes. We have to go um twit twit uh, twitch user user um i don't even think you'd need to put the static here yeah this you can't specify a storage class there so it actually does other thing you do it up in the header file and i you could probably put it there you know There's nothing stopping you putting the static there. Um, oh, Ryan, excellent. Can we have some? Um, can we have some yappy dog love in chat for Ryan? Basic concepts of clip. That is excellent. That is great news. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's going on with my emotes there? Uh, fuel stable? No, I want to. I want that to essentially be a constructor. Is what I really want. Thank you for the welcome, Mingsy Rose. And I notice your use of the command that doesn't actually exist at the moment, the kettle command. And the answer is yes, please. Uh, when you say good luck with that like that, Fuel Snail, well, I sent I'm about to walk into a track, into a trap.
Excellent news, Ryan Roberts. Excellent news. Yeah, essentially, I don't want to stick a rock ton of logic in a in a constructor. Yeah, I want a factory method. Essentially, that's that's what I want. Um, just because I've always, if I see just usage of a constructor, I expect it to do next to nothing. Um, whereas a factory method makes me think that it's going to do more than just assign a couple of things. Essentially, to me, con if I see a constructor invocation, I assume that it's completely dumb and does nothing. Whereas a factory method, I'm like, well, okay, it's building something. So it's it's just a bit of a semantic thing in my mind. I don't know if other people see it that way. Um, next, you're going for fundamentals, then C++, then getting some data structures in. And if you've got time, at oop. Um, the best thing I can think of with object-oriented is... Don't necessarily go straight for it, but like like we were doing, we got a parser that was returning a, a map of attributes, and it just looked a bit kludgy, and an object looks to be the solution. I don't mind the object, and I don't mind the programming. I'm not a big fan of orienting it around objects. Like, I, I wouldn't have gone straight for doing the class. Now, the fact that one just so happens to have stared us in the face, I'm happy to use it. But until then, I, I just didn't like the idea. <clears throat> so this now needs to be um, user dot attributes. And, of course, attributes is private, isn't it? Um, can we get to... those attributes reasonably well or do we need to do something a little bit more like um, I don't know stud map um, stud string stud string um, at and then go and do this. Why, um, oh, I, I very much doubt I'll be on in three hours' time. In three hours' time, it'll be midnight. Um, so put the factory outside the class and then the constructor takes the takes the make i don't understand if i finish this off quickly and see if you sort of see where i'm going with this um takes the map right well the constructor's taking the map so we've already got that one there um so let's go Stud map stud string stud string atters for what it's worth. We'll grab that as well. In fact, I'm not even sure why is this not moaning at me. This should be moaning at me, surely, and telling me that I need to create that constructor. Ah, no, because it thinks that that's the same. So what we do instead is to that there. That now works in theory, does it? May not be redeclared re outside its class. What? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Semicolon. Yeah, that would make more sense. Wow, because C++'s um, errors are really, really handy, aren't they? So, okay. 
and we now literally just need to go and say um, attributes at us. Oh, when we initialize the member, move it. So stood move at us. Okay, and thank you very much, Mingxi Rose, for bringing in that uh, wonderful mug of coffee. Okay, so Fuel Stable, I've done a small amount of Rust programming. You've probably seen me do that. So I know what this kind of should do. Does this do what I think? Does this mean that... Oh, no, it means we're avoiding copies. Okay, avoiding copies is good. If I now try to, let's say, if I did, made a switch user with attributes and then tried to use attributes, would the runtime moan and go, no, you stood moved to that, you're not allowed access to it again. Would that happen? Uh, so we should stood move here too. Where's here? Remember, we're on a bit of a time delay. Which is slightly annoying. So should we stud move from there? Okay, so we're returning Twitch user and we're moving the, attrib the attributes into the constructor. And we're then moving them again from the constructor into, um, into where they belong. So I guess we're not trying to grab a constant a const ref here. I mean we probably could as well, couldn't we? Can we do that? There. No, we can't. It cries. Okay. Well it cries for multiple reasons, one of which being that. Oh, the const you're enforcing a copy. Whereas we don't want to copy this time, we want the move. Yeah, let's not do the two override. We're only ever going to move it. And what's the double ampersand again? I mean, again, that's that's giving us the same thing here. But yeah, I mean, let let's stick with that. And I think, to be fair, we can probably neaten that up a little bit. So we're making ourselves a new, new user. And we've got a user class now that gets us a user. Um, so, I mean, destructor, do we need to do anything? I don't think we do because we're never calling new. So I don't think we need to bother in here let's do that um let's build again i know that we've broken quite an amount i'm just doing essentially build based things here <clears throat> so user attributes is not there well actually this now needs to not be here as well doesn't it if we think about it this and a Right, so let's do that. This should really now be on the user. Um, bool const um, twit twitch user. Is moderator. We don't need to have the attributes passed in there. We now need that to be copied into there. Um, and that is essentially all we need to check if we're a moderator. And again, we still need to clean it up to include the broadcaster in the proper way. But that's fine. We don't need to yet. Um, and we've already got something in here. So let's go back to main. Main is now going to moan about a few more things 
So let's just build again. So the default constructor, we're not allowed. The default constructor of Twitch message can't be referenced. It's a deleted function. Ah, now of course that makes some semblance of sense because Twitch user. Can we do that for now? Ah, so Twitch message. Ugh. Yeah, we can't anymore have that just as. Hmm. What about creating an empty factory method? Um. For what? I mean, at the moment, I wonder if this ought to become a clan. No, it's still a strut because hey, we can still have access to all of these things natively. <clears throat> Let's have a look at other issues. Is moderator? Well, we know that one now because we actually need a Twitch user, which will be message user is moderator. That attributes we don't need there. I don't think we actually need access to that. In fact, I don't want us to have access to those, whether we supposedly need it or not. Again, is moderator attributes needs to become message user is moderator. Um, let's just do a build again, see if we're back to most of the issues fixed. Okay, so let's have a look here. Yeah, we're just trying to get to things. Uh, Message.attributes is attributes for. Well, that's not allowed either. <clears throat> if you wrote the code, you make a default constructor and let the other constructor that accepts map be public as well. Um, I, I would like, if we're going to initialize a user, I'd like them to be initialized there and then. Um... I get what you're saying. It does seem pretty harmless, but it doesn't seem... It seems a bit... Mm, not convinced. I'd, I'd like to try and ignore it first. I'd like to try and go another way. So message.attributes is that. Well, that now needs to become message.user. So we've got to have a default constructor for a user. Let's... Let's have a default empty constructor. Uh, optional of Twitch user. Hmm. But a message is always going to have a user. This is only messing us up. Why don't we say that the message can't be made into... Oh. Actually, who says a message has always got to have a Twitch user? Let's, let's go back from that and let's say that this is going to be an option. I don't know why it ever would, but let's go for it. We can always refactor it out if we don't like it anyway, can't we? Let's let's be pragmatic rather than dogmatic at the moment. So Twitch message. Now that's another issue. Where the is Twitch? Where where our message is defined? Um, where's Twitch message? In the parser header file. See, I don't like it being in, in a header file called parser either. I think it should be in a Twitch message thing. Um, so what we're saying is third optional of Twitch user. And of course, that's going to require the include boost optional. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's just use the standard one. Okay, so we've now gotten... We're not attempting to reference the deleted function anymore, I don't think. Is moderator not a member of stud optional Twitch user? Well, of course it's not, because we need... 
Okay, let's say that we grab out. We're going to ask if we are a user. We need to we need to make sure that user isn't null. Otherwise we spin back around the loop. At this point. I would say um if user equals um twitch user user equals a message dot user yes there is only one um Does this work again? I can never ever remember. I know that there's a way of doing this. Do we need to do? Yes, you are Minxy Rose, but the um, the bot isn't running at the moment. Do I need to include functional into here? Is this what's happening, or do I need to include optional? I include optional. Or is it functional that I need for this? Or is it both? Um, let's go CPP reference. Let's go to a site that we haven't been to all stream yet. So it was we were due a visit, weren't we? Um, CPP reference. Dot com and we will look for um stud optional that's more interesting because i seem to remember that we can do oh is it nah right i know what i've done there um I'm trying to specify a type. What we actually want to do is go auto there. User is now that stood optional still. Um, and it goes user star star user. I'm trying to remember exactly what they're doing. Okay, so if that then yeah so we can return we can do optional returning factory functions as conditions in whiles and ifs and then star whatever or we can do get hmm is this necessarily the nicest way of doing access is the contained value okay so Ah, so we can just do that essentially. Okay, um, so that if goes there, that if is going there. Let's stick the parentheses in the right place. Let's stick another one there. Um, again, that now is just user and is arrow is moderator to get rid of those okay so that's those now it no doubt with um attributes for is not defined because now what we need to do is go twitch user um let's remember how to do it from attributes attributes which need to be a String and let's build the solution again. <clears throat> and oh, one or more multiply defined symbols found. Of course, stud string to string there is defined somewhere else. Um, because I did a copy of it. Where did I copy that 
two. Um, where did I copy that from? I think we have a copy of that in Twitch user and parser, don't we? Yes. Okay, that's a little annoying. Um, where are we using two string in here and where are we using it in Twitch user? We're using it in here all over the place. And in Twitch user, where are we using this variant of it? Just in one place. Now, I'm tempted just to do this for here. Um, and if we have to do more string handling, we'll deal with that then. So let's re let's build the solution again. And we're built. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see if we run. So, Hubblebot Online, if I go and say hi to everyone, it's happy with that. We're in release mode, apparently. If I hit the horn, because I'm allowed to, it works. Um, and it's obviously now got the cooldown period on it. If, let's say, someone who isn't a mod hits the horn, it just will ignore you, hopefully. And if Mingsy Rose hits the horn, if you're quick enough, it might tell you no, because it hasn't been 30 seconds, or it might let you do it, because it might have been 30 seconds, because my timings are, are not very good. I need some Jeopardy music or something for when I'm having a quick swig. <clears throat> anyway, I think we're at the point where this should all have worked and we have now a twitch user object oh mingsy rose you're just too late i just shut the bot down that was that was a bit bad timing sorry about that <clears throat> so yeah um what we're doing there's right there's one thing i will try and explain because I don't think it's necessarily obvious exactly what's going on. In main, this if condition looks really weird because of the single equals there. What this does is if we don't have a value, if we don't have a value, then this will return false. Um, I don't know exactly how that works, which I sense means we're going to end up dropping into stud optional and finding out, aren't we? But yeah, essentially that is a ma that is a if it has a value. Uh, it doesn't look weird to you, fuel snable. It does to me because I'm I I would instinctively want to put that second equals in and say who wrote that. But yeah. So we're saying if we've passed the message, then we spit that out. We get some arguments, which to be fair could all go inside this if. Um, ah, it's completely idiomatic in C++. Okay, that's cool. I mean, I'm not a C++ developer traditionally. I do other languages where this would be not particularly idiomatic. We do now have, um, well, we've got hard coded commands. Let's say that we try and look at supporting commands with argument at some point. Um, and how do we go about doing that kind of thing? Because at the moment, let's say Mingsy Rose wanted to do a welcome command or a warm welcome as a mod. She'd be unable to do that because there's an argument in there. 
Whereas that's something that I think we're going to really like to do, as well as, you know, replying to an individual. Um, incidentally, that was chosen by the role of a fair D6, so it is a random number. Oh, I have to make that joke every stream. I'm now contractually obliged to make the XKCD joke on every stream, am I not? Yeah, the WW command is a um, Nightbot one. And if I... Uh, all you do with Nightbot, I don't know how much of this I can realistically show. Let me peel a tab off and see if I can show bits of what Nightbot does. Uh, beta night. I think it's nightbot.tv. Well, I think it would help if I put the H in. Uh, let's log in. Let's log in with Twitch. Go to commands custom. So that warm welcome command um, has a has a template in it. If I copy and paste that, because I don't necessarily want to show everything. I've got VS Code on this install. Yeah, I should have. I have. We've used it enough. So we type that in. So the warm welcome command, if I do that for, let's say, Minxy Rose, you'll notice that it put Minxy Rose in the chat message above my head now. It put Minxy Rose in there because I sent the warm welcome. And that is because of this to user here. So the string interpolation in Nightbot. Now I think we need to look into supporting that at some point. Um, because if we don't, we could end up with a couple of issues. Well, we end up with a bot that does very, very little. I've also now got a mouse that's doing very, very little. Let's say nothing as a good interpretation of that. So after unplugging and plugging back in, and you guys all hearing this, by the way, does anybody know why my computer starts ignoring USB devices occasionally? Am I right in thinking I've got a power issue? And if I have, is it a power supply upgrade time? Or, you know, would that fix other things potentially? Like RAM not running quite as quick as it should, I have to pull the RAM back a bit. Or, do I just get a USB hub? Yeah, he also does that as well sometimes, Danny Cran does it. Um, I'm... I mean, a 600 watt power supply for this machine should be enough. Maybe. Possibly. Um, ha, Minxie Rose, Danny Crom was in here before you. Uh, Danny Crom 5 was, they were here at the very, very start of the stream. In fact, probably before the stream started. So, yeah, I mean, warm welcome, but I think you're like, Nearly an hour and a half later, I think, on that one. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're swapping USB devices a fair bit. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I have got USB devices upon USB devices. I've got what? Streamed out keyboard, mouse, mouse chained off the keyboard, webcam, stuff in the back of the monitor because... Oh, yeah. Um, what's it thing? Tablet, yeah, that's USB. I've got USB, yeah, I think I've got so much USB plugged into this, I probably could do with powered hubs. Hi there, upgrading Dave. I think, I, I, I think, are you loving this mug? The mug that I've always used on street, my mug. <laughs> I have jokingly said, and I think I ought to do it. I need to. I need to start collecting novelty mugs. Um, I don't know whereabouts are you from, upgrading Dave. You're not from the UK, are you? As I recall, I should know where you're from because I've seen your stream. Bye, bye, insect. Uh, you're ah right. This mug came from a British supermarket called Asda. Now. I appreciate that you don't have a place called Asda over there, I don't believe. But Asda is owned by Walmart. So you might be able to find this in Walmart. And it holds just under a, a an imperial pint. 
probably holds just over an American pint of coffee. So that's that's how much instant coffee I drink on stream, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so yeah, you should. Hopefully, you'll be able to get it in your Walmart. Um, over there. Either that, or I'm sure you can get it on Amazon or something like that. Um, it marches your mug, your giant mug. Okay, Minxie Rose, that's that's a confusing one. Do you want to retype that, please, so I can understand it? All right, so we've played enough with optional. Um, I think there's a. a I think you've got a match or something on optional. I think you can do a function that takes a pair of landers, some and not. I mean, incidentally, if you look, uh, uh, just a bit of an aside here. If you look at what we've done around here, let's... Um, oh, yeah, we need to deal with that as well, don't we? Let's go back to that in a minute. Let's start namespacing things as well. I just wanted to go... Yeah, so we've got landers. We've got lambda functions. We've got um, first class functions. We can pass stud function. So anyone, I ah, matches your mug. <laughs> Fair enough, Mingsy Rose. Yeah, you have the white mugs here, and I think you've got one of the boss mugs down home, haven't you? Uh, I am just going to pour some more of this diet coat. Well, this. Cola with zero sugar. Mmm, yummy. Yummy supermarket cola. Nah, not really. I ought to buy the proper stuff. I'm just too tight at the moment. And now I've got Amazon emailing me saying that things are coming. Yippee! <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, if you were to get back on sub... Hang on a second. To get back on topic, so we've got lambdas, we are, we've got stud function, we've got everything we need in C++ to realistically call it a functional language. No, we haven't got a particularly nice um, monad syntax, but it's, it can be used in a functional manner. So, um, yeah, I did say we needed namespaces, didn't I? Because I've gone a little bit sloppy on that. So let's stick the user in a namespace. Let's stick the, um, the socket in one, I think. Let's try the message. Which is in parser.h, which I don't like that name for that now. Um, hmm. Do we want that parse me pass message to be? Want well, to be fair? Why don't we say that that struct also has a? Um, stud optional um, of Twitch message. Pass that, and then we don't need to pass that address in. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, what coming tonight? Sorry, Mingsy Rose. Hi there, Codebase Alpha. How are you doing? So, let's go to... Um, back to the parser.cpp file, which is all of a sudden going to change its name. Twitch message there. Well, that doesn't need to be a bool. That now needs to be a... stud optional of that... 
Um, that needs to be there. And we need... Let's get the namespace bit in as well. Namespace... Okay. Oh, uh, you've got no audio there, Codebase Alpha. Um, can other people hear me? Can everyone else hear me? Um, I've put that in chat as well because I'm guessing that if you couldn't hear me, you wouldn't hear me asking if you could hear me. No, stuff from Amazon is coming tomorrow, Mingsy Rose. Uh, I didn't manage to get same di same day on most on this. So pass will not take in one of those. We'll go. Um last year's undefined. Why is that all un undefined all of a sudden? Ah yes, of course. Um Twitch Message. Mm. Okay, upgrading Dave's getting sound. Excellent. Uh, I have been be being a little bit quiet, though, so I don't know. You just haven't heard me while I've been not talking. Minxie Rose can hear me in stereo. Lucky Minxie. Lucky, lucky Minxie. Ah, that's better. That's good, then. Okay, so... What are we now returning? Well, cheap pass, message begin, message end, message parser. Well, what we now do is go, if that all worked, um, we return, uh, what we're returning, we're returning MSG, aren't we, for the message. Um, otherwise, we'll just return empty struct. Uh, yeah, still working on the bot indeed, Codebase Alpha. Um, quick rundown, we fixed the release mode issue. <clears throat> um, upgrading Dave. The optional concept, You are, if you've got an optional, you are specifically stating this thing might not have a value. Um, whereas something being nullable means that you have to check for null all the time so it's really sort of comes more out of functional programming i think than what you'd normally see in an imperative language but in essence it is explicitly marking your object or your record or your value as this could contain a value or it could not which when you've got, let's say in C-sharp now, you've got a concept known as nullable reference types, where you can say, you know what, this type may not ever be null, or no type may be null unless I specifically state it can. Um, in F-sharp, your records natively can't be null. So if you want to represent something that is quote-unquote null, you use an option and then coupled with your compiler at compile time if you don't check the null the compiler will catch you um, let's I don't think the C++ compiler necessarily will do this I think it'll go bang at runtime but oh hello everything's going oh yeah namespace gh Essentially, if we were in um, if we were in something like F sharp, and you know this if statement here that we've said returns true if it exists, false if it doesn't. If I were to comment that out, in fact, it's already just well, user has done it there. But let's say message dot user is moderator. You see, that's happy letting me do that. 
F sharp would throw a wobbly and go, no, you can't do that because the because it's not an optional. In essence, user being an option, what you're doing there is you're calling get value, which is traditionally a bit silly. Uh, it goes back as well a bit to the monads talk we did. So let's let's Ah, you, you've got it update upgrading Dave. If you want a bit more on it, I mean, one of the big things is, let's, yeah, optional guarantees that you won't get a null. So, won't, yeah, you can't have a null. So, it, it's a type system guarantee. You know, type systems being able to guarantee domain, domain types, I, I really like that concept a lot. Um, I like the fact that it won't compile in, say, F Sharp or Haskell or whatever, if I don't specify that. If I if I don't do a null check in something like Haskell, the compiler will moan at me. Like with pattern matching, if I don't exhaust my pattern matches, the compiler, the Haskell compiler would say no. The um, F Sharp compiler would say, uh, "Are you sure?" Yeah, optional is very much like a vector with zero or one element in some senses. In fact, to be fair for your Snabel, um, if you think about the F sharp implementation of option, you've got option dot iter, which iterates over either zero times if it's a non, or you get it to happen once if it's there. And so in some ways it could very much be taken like that. It's, it's a nice convenience, right? Pass message is not there. Um, auto message equals. Let's go gh twitch message. So, a little refactor here um, is now. We are grabbing out that message if and only if it's, it is one. If it isn't, if we've returned a null, it's not going to give us anything. Um, so this is going to come out false, so it's going to fall through. Uh, at this point, we need to grab things out using the other the arrow syntax. I mean, you could also, I think, dot get dot body or whatever works. Do we not have a get? I thought we did. I thought optionals had one. But essentially, we're using that. Which, if I remember rightly, in C++ is really shorthand for doing that. Um, I seem to remember wrongly, unless I've not got things. Oh no, yeah, it's that. So instead of saying dereference message and then get the body on it, you can do the whole thing in one go with the arrow. So that's a bit of syntactic sugar. And that is all it is. Uh, quite often used when you are working with pointers. And makes it look a little bit more like PHP. Because PHP seems to do this a lot. Now let's carry on grabbing these out and updating to use the optionals. Um, <clears throat> in Scala, option is an I enumerable or an iterable. Um, yeah, I can see that. I mean, I suppose you could quite easily, in .NET, implement I enumerable and say it either has a length 0 or 1. So parser.h, now that's a really bad name for this now, because this isn't a parser. So let's suggest that this is a Twitch message 
Oh, it was a suggestion in F sharp, but not accepted. Um, nothing stopping you doing it yourself. Just because it's not inherently in the language doesn't mean that we, we can't do it. Um, and here we go. What's going wrong now? Let's build, because I know that things will not be right. Because that parser.h no longer exists. It's Twitch, um, message. Anything else want to have a moan? Anything at all? Let's hit F6, let's build. Okay, we've got a problem there, GH, Twitch message. Ah yes, we need to include it in here as well. Um, Twitch message dot H. Um, no, all right, we'll do that five instead of instead of F six. <clears throat> it's hard to add in enumerable to option without type classes. Um, I'll grant you that, but don't forget, options not too difficult to re-implement yourself. And you could implement the uh, the computation expression for it as well. Remember that all option is is something like and I can't remember the exact syntax, but is it not just let in line? Isn't that essentially just? Oh wow! It didn't come up. Um, there, but that's basically all option is, and then you've got the um, the surrounding functionality. Why did that not come up on what Streamlabs doing to me though? Because that didn't come up above me. That I got three stars instead. Hmm. Why is Streamlabs doing that? Streamlabs is being naughty. <clears throat> Yeah, that is the problem. Most APIs don't use your option type, so you almost need to convert from someone else's op to the, from the framework option type to your option type. This is where I th I'd like to see type classes in F sharp. Is just go, you know what? I'm going to implement it. Just don't argue with me. <gasps> oh, I've still got a bit of coffee left. Excellent. So, I mean, the bot does seem to work. And if I go, um, hi, chat. We're still working. And I think we've got... Yes, Danny Cron. Yes, I am. Essentially, I used to stream with just the mug. And I'd make a nice coffee just before starting streaming and realized that I would well I'd make the nice coffee I'd then have a swig of it at the start of the stream and it would be boiling hot still and I need to drink I need to drink all the way through streams hence I have a cold drink for until my hot drink is cool enough also the cold drinks refillable I've got the bottle of it the bottle down by my legs as well so if I don't need to take a break, but I need more drink, especially being diabetic, you drink a lot. If I need more drink and I don't really need the break, I can just quickly top up while something's building or whatever. So that's why that's done. But yeah, I, I drink out of two mugs. Uh, yeah, then, then I got a coffee fairy, but then at that point again, I've got a drink that's too hot until it's cool enough. So yeah, I have a, I mean, to make the other joke, balanced diet, yeah? One in each hand. And, you know, that's a pint, that is a imperial pint. So it shows you that the boss mug is not a small mug. It's not me having Donald Trump hands, let's say. Uh, upgrading Dave. No need for the optional in that circumstance, because if the soda isn't there, if the soda isn't there, I want it to go bang. I want the exception. So that doesn't need to be an optional of soda. That can just be a, well, a cola. 
Uh, yeah, I don't think we we don't really call it soda in the UK. We call it fizzy pop or a fizzy drink. So yeah, I I'm not going to check for that being null because if that's null and it goes bang, that's fine. Because let's face it, if there's if there's no drink available, it's I'm going to crash. Radio. So we've now got something approaching a little bit nicer code. The main is still a bit poor. I still want to see if we can do something a little bit more interesting for these commands. What say we go for a pluggable architecture? What say that we have DLLs that we can just load as and when? Yeah, that's a bit much for tonight. But what say each command actually goes in its own place and we do something different with them? And then we have the fallback command if none of the hard code ones match. So, in essence, what we're seeing here, and this is part of, again, a big thing I've got about, I don't necessarily design for object orientation, but when they present themselves, who am I to turn the opportunity down? We've got a pattern here emerging. And this is this actually is a pretty important discussion. If we've got anyone that's reasonably new to programming and they've been taught about patterns and how to adhere to them, you either want to close your ears if you want to carry on believing what your teachers are teaching you on that one, or pin them back for this because it's a little bit different. If you look at... Um, if you look at what the Gang of Four say in the Refactoring to Patterns books, uh, and, and the Gang of Four book in general, you'll notice that there's never an emphasis on necessarily, you know, forcing a pattern. But if you see one emerging, use it. So I can see a strategy pattern here. We're going, let's check for the body command. Okay, let's check for the add command command. All right, now let's check for the random command. We're literally checking and spinning through each of the bot commands. Now, we could go all UML and draw the pretty little diagram for the strategy pattern. I say we could do that. I couldn't because I haven't got a clue what it looks like anymore because I, I, I learned UML at university <clears throat> years ago. Um... And I'm pretty sure three or four different variants have followed by, and I don't understand the symbols because I I learnt it years ago. I I don't use it so much anymore. In fact, I can't remember the last UML diagram I drew. But we we do genuinely have a strategy pattern here, don't we? So what are we doing? We need to pass in the me the message and the user. Well, the user is in the message anyway. Um, fuel Snable, have I seen the web sequence diagrams? I haven't. Now, sequence diagrams I don't have a problem with actually. That's the one bit of UML I am a fan of. I mean, in general, I don't think the idea of diagramming things is bad. You'll notice that, I, I mean, we haven't done it for a while. But we can, um, wow, this looks really good, actually. Oh, wow. Oh, no, this looks, in, this looks like something we're going to have to play with. Or well, I definitely have. Um, so you can do the hand-drawn design. You can do the standard designs. Oh, hello, this is interesting. So, yeah, this is very good stuff, actually. Because I don't need to be able to draw. Um, so, bot commands. So, we're going to go um, something like, let's go 
Oh, I don't know. I've got to play with this now. Main to command repo is going to be... Um, have you... Um, command re request... So at the moment, this is let's let's quickly diagram out just just for the fun of it because we can. Let's kind of diagram out this. So we're going from the main to the command repository. We're getting a request um, from the command repo to main. We're getting a um, command. Um, note right of now note right of oh hey I'll tell you what there's there's some good uh, good stuff here so not note right of command signal uh, command repo is going to be um I don't know. We have that command. So this is for that sequence. Um, we don't have that command. We'll go from there. Um, And then main and is going to be a executes with args. Okay, so we've got a diagram. That's essentially what we're doing. Command request, we've got it, so we send it back, or we don't have that command, so we send nothing back. This is really cool. And again, all the styles we've got, so we can, you know, you can do a more professional one if you want. Oh, that's really impressive. Uh, and then different examples. Okay, there's some premium ones there. But there's... There's other sort of examples. Let's cut these out. Oh, so we can get examples of what it's doing. So there's the destroy, there's the returning thing stuff. So that's if it's going out and coming straight back with something which is kind of the one that we we ought to have used. Oh, that's really cool. And you can save your downloads. Okay, so there's the alt stuff as well. So that's the alternatives. This is really impressive. And um, who's saying Emacs plugin? Can you write your diagrams in Emacs with this? Oh, I'm sharing this with my workmate. Oh, I like this. Help. Um, so we can activate premium features. That's. That's not expensive. I'll be completely honest, this isn't totally expensive at all. Then there's the team edition, private edition. Do you know what? Even the private edition, that's not particular. I mean, and that's one off. That's not expensive. That I know it's a lot of money for an individual, but as a, as a, as a small team, as a company, that's not big money at all. That really isn't big money. That's I wish I'd have thought of that. That's really impressive. Wow. Um. That's yeah, Mincy Rose. That's exactly what I'm going to be using it for at some point. I think. 
I mean, we now go and do something different where we go, um, alt, what was the alt thing? Is that one I like the look of, actually? Alt, we have the command, um, then we'll do... Um, okay, so that's roughly what we've got there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you're burning that kind of money on AWS per month, sorry, I should actually be streaming, shouldn't I? I'm, I'm being a very, very bad, um, bad streamer here. Man doesn't exist. Um, which, to be fair, actually, you could refactor that out, couldn't you? I don't think that would be a ridiculous idea, and of course, that lot doesn't need to exist. And that's a much more realistic diagram of what we're doing. I mean, it's it's a bit of a daft example, but wow, that's really impressive. Um. Very impressive, actually. Okay, we'll go away from that for now. But as we can see, we've got a strategy pattern here. And it is coming out. And we need the message. Now, do we pass the message and the user, even though the message contains a reference to the user? I say no. But we need to, we still need to guard, or do we make the guards happen in the in the right place? Um, <clears throat> oh, ho, 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 you never want to fall behind on GDPR stuff. GDPR it seems to be their big, their big thing of the week. Let's sketch something out here. Let me, let's do something sensible actually. If I Fire up source tree. Um, essentially, I'm not a big fan of. I know Visual Studio's got its own built-in. What's it? But I'm I'm not overly keen on it. So let's stage all of that. And I think it's all very committable. Um, I know I probably ought to have committed at different times. But let's say um, fixed re release build. Um, refactor to objects and structs and <clears throat> using stirred optional use stirred optional instead of a bool and address. Okay, so let's push that up now. Because then if this if the rest of this goes wrong, um, we can at least back back it out, can't we? So to sketch out what is a command, well we've seen that we've got a message body and we're checking for user flags. So why don't we grab flags from a user? And then we can just pass the message body and the user flags. Um, which for now is just going to be the user, whether the user is a moderator. Because we don't actually need anything other than the body itself, do we? And it's a function, so a command is going to be literally a function that takes a body of a message, whether the user is a moderator or not, and it, it can ignore that freely, but it gets it, returns void, and does things. 
Does that seem sensible? I think it probably does. Let me have a couple of minutes to get a coffee and a another an, a stretch of the legs. Then I will be back and we will play with this. So let's try for one more refactoring tonight. I will be here. I'll be back again in five minutes. So I shall see everyone soon. Uh, returns void. Technic well, returns nothing, but you know, let's say returns void for the I'll tell you what, let's say returns unit, and because C doesn't have unit, then yeah, it'll have to be void. But yeah, returns nothing. Return You knew what I meant. Right, I'll see everyone in a few minutes before everyone gets the, themselves in a tizzy. No fuel stable, I'm not doing structure unit, nothing. We might as well just use void as do it. It's <laughs> tell you what, when you when we get back, tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me why we should use that struct instead of void. Um in C where the language support isn't necessarily there. Because I'm sure I am. Now, I'll see everyone in a couple of minutes. And I'm back. Thank you very much, everyone, for your patience. I have two full drinks again. One for now, one for in a bit. So, where we last were, we were looking at the fact that we've got commands that all follow a reasonably similar pattern. So, what say we have a look at defining a command as a function for now? Um, what are variant and what is any? I know that variant at VB6 was basically even more dynamically typed than dynamically typed normally is. Hang on, variant, what's that? What is variant in C++? I can never remember. Um, hang on. Uh, no, that wasn't the very, where I wanted to go. I wanted to go there. Um, stud variant. Because I'm sure we've, I'm sure I've used this. <clears throat> ah, type safe union. Oh, variant is essentially a union type. Cool. Um, well, a discriminated union. Uh, any is like object kind of. That really is weird. Let's have a look. Standard any. Type safe container of single values of any type. So what our... So stud any a equals 1. So we can't cast there. We can grab the type's name. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh no, no, no. That's that's a that's just Is that a weak type then? That sounds like a weak type to me. So it goes I D and B, yeah. Integer decimal bool. Um, bad any cast. Well, that's come from. I oh, don't know. From there. Um, object in dot. I've never used object in dot net. I think I've used dynamic once or twice in C sharp and quickly got rid of it. I don't tend to use it much. Hmm. It's not uh it's not something that I try something I try and avoid. The variant thing is really cool. Um no the void in, void star in C can't be safely downcasted and he can. Yeah. Uh let's fire VS back up. So what we're saying here is just to kind of re unwind the stack a little. I'm thinking that the bot that a function let's take a simpler one let's go for that one let's pull the random command out into its own function for now we can do more with it afterwards but um, 
Void. Random. No. Oh. Command. Random. Well, let's just say. Let's call it body. And. Um. Ah, we need the username in this one as well, don't we? Okay, um... So maybe we do need to pass the whole message through. Or do we go... Um... Username... Well, actually, it needs to be the user, uh, the display. Our community grows. Thank you very much, Dane Helco, for joining in and following. Please let me know if I've pronounced that rightly. Let us know who you are, where you're from, how you found the place. Or not, it's entirely up to you. Um, so that needs to be body. Because, hey, we'll do that. I then want the user. Um, Twitch user user and that again gonna be a me one and it's gonna be a const rare um because actually user we need a, we need the um username we want the display name out don't we so user dot well again from attributes is moderator well let's now have a display name as the getter um, send message we need to pass that in as well don't we so how are we getting send message send message is a where did we get that from twitch dot center channel that so it's a twitch socket um so we need to pass that in as well don't we so it's a standard uh, stud function of int yeah okay um do we pass that in the into the command or do we yeah we're gonna have to aren't we um so it's a one of these Uh, well, actually, call it that. So that now works. Display name doesn't exist yet on the user class. Well, that's fine um, because I know that we use that username somewhere, uh, that display name somewhere. We use it in. We also use it somewhere in um, is moderator, don't we? So let's say that will factor that out as well while we're at it. So stud string um, display name twitch user display name And of course, we now need to do um, we'll grab that and then we'll go return it second otherwise we'll return the empty string. And what's this now not happy about? Um, it's not happy because we don't have that member. Well, that's fine. We do now. And that means that that should fix out there. Um, 
So why is this a problem? Call of an object of a class type without appropriate operator or conversion functions to a pointer to a function type. Wow. Um, um, of course, because that's not a function. That's just a member, so we don't need to call it. Okay, so that's how we get the display name. Cool, we can now work with that because what we can do is we can go, well, we can pull all that out and just go if display name. Is that, then do that. Okay, that's probably a more reasonable way of doing things. So now that we've got that, we can go back to main. And have we still got errors? User dot display name. And why is user dot display name now giving me a problem? It has type qualifiers that are not compatible with the member function Twitch user display name. Object type is const Twitch user. Ah! Ah, hang on. Can we not get that display name in a const manner then? Um, right, am I am I reading this correctly? Let's keep that up. Let's keep that over there as well. So we are a const here, we're a const ref. So display name, that is const. That can't be a const extra, can it? Um, <clears throat> and we're passing a const reference to that user, we're not passing the user itself. Should we be passing it as a const reference or should we just pass that? That would work. That will not. <clears throat> hmm. Does anybody know why this isn't working? Am I, I, I suspect I'm being a bit of an idiot here. Um, call function on const object C++. Can I call that? Um, it should be declared like that. So you want to put the const at the end. Um, ah yes, of course, because it needs to be a const, const method. So it returns a string const, and it is a method that's a const as well. Okay, that makes sense. And that is now, that now explains why const easily comes after the type because const comes after the type there as well because otherwise const standard string to which user display name const would make a lot less sense okay that's cool so that's also a const method um yeah <laughs> as you were typing that fuel snable i was also going for well that should be const as well surely and on the grounds that that's giving no real issues i assert that it is a const and personally i don't know what everyone else's views on this is but for me if something can be const it should be const if it could be const expert even better <clears throat> anything that is you know as const as pot uh, as possible yeah const correctness is a virtue i agree with you there fuel snable so that being said we can now go back to main we've got that whole thing done so command random is that function 
And I think we can sensibly say that that is everything that we're going to need. The body, the user, and the send message. Because from the user, we can get the user's flags. So that is the signature of a... Um, of a command. So we can almost go type def. No, we don't use type def, do we? Um, const cast therefore is a vice. I don't know much about const cast. Do we still do type def in C? Do we do kind of. Our community grows. Thank you very much for that follow, treble god 23. No type def. So, ah, yeah, we go using, um, I don't know, command equals std function of, because this is going to be a long type name, in fact, let's just do the sensible here. And copy that lot, just get rid of the names. Wow, that's a sizable type name. You can see why I wanted that. <laughs> I've never seen that in valid any programming language before. But I mean, that is the type. And I'm quite happy that we can do using that. Because essentially, what I want to do, if we if we were to fire the bot up now, the random command wouldn't work. In fact, let me demonstrate that. Because it's been a while since we've done a command and run. Uh, extract the inner function to its own using. That's not a bad idea, Fuel Snable. I think that's completely reasonable. Yeah, WTF Blub, I do as well. Uh, but if we try random there, it won't work. It falls out the back. But now, all we do is go, um, well, let's use command random. In fact, let's do the, the um, that as well. So, let's go um, using message sender equals that. Because that will now do that that is also now gonna be usable somewhere else where else did we try that yeah there um that's quite nice isn't it incidentally you can do something very you can redefine you can do type aliasing in c sharp um i've been doing it at work showing how that's done but you can type alias in c sharp I don't see it done often, but in cases like this, I think it's really handy. Um, okay, so... <clears throat> let's say that we're going to try and call that command random command. And that's cool beans. We can do that. Let's stick it back in where it was. Command random... Well, that's now um, message body. That's going to be um, user. And that's going to be, well, oddly enough, send message. Why is user not there at the moment? Um, because it needs to be the reference like that. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, ah, nice WTF blob. Thank you. Someone else who uses alias type alias in C sharp. It is wondrous, is it not? So let's say that we do that. Fire this up again. I suspect that it will work quite nicely. Now I'm watching the time because I don't want to be streaming for too much longer. So if I hit random, I get the random. None of this should be a surprise to anybody, and I expect that it won't be. Let's extract another. Let's extract TNT. Um, again, we're going to actually extract something. We're going to change this slightly as well. But let's do the extraction first. Hi there, FP Jester. How are you doing? So let's go... Let's cut that out. Let's go... Um, 
void command TNT. And again, let's pass it exactly the same things. Let's pass it all of that. Um, again, body just needs to be body. Argument is a stud string. So let's just use that one. Um, and again, this is somewhere where stud optional might be a good idea. So we will do that as well at some point. And again, this should now work, except that we're not calling command TNT. Well, that's fine. Let's again prove that TNT doesn't work. Um, let's go bang TNT all. And the bot doesn't, doesn't care about it. Copy that. Stuff it there. All of that lot is exactly the same. Stuff it there. And it looks like we've got a reasonably generic command implementation here. Because if I fire this bot up again, it's online now. TNT all. And it works. Cool. So. Aha. Why don't we do something like and we're gonna to have to leave this half done for now but stud vector um of type command commands equals oh well do that commands dot push back Random one um, commands dot push back the TNT or the um, till next time command, and then instead of calling all of those individually, we just do a for auto um, command. commands and we do it this way and then all we do is we find a way of registering command now actually commands and commands ah that's uh, something of interest okay so this one needs to be called bot commands for now because we use it again somewhere else. Um, and there, and again, let's just go. Just so that we don't fall foul of naming rules and things. Uh, in fact, that's a bad idea as well. Um, because we're using the name bot command for something else. Uh, this fact that we've got naming clashes is going to disappear at some point because we're going to use... We're, at the moment, we're doing so many different things in different... We're doing the same thing in so many different ways. But that now means that all we need to do is create a vector of commands, register each command, and that's how we're registering commands, so we could create a command registry, register all our commands, and then just spin through them. And that's kind of how a plugin architecture would work. Um, and that's the command signature. I mean, again, you could probably do something a bit more interesting than that. You could probably shorten that somehow. I know you could do it with a macro. I'm also not going to do it with a macro. Um, purely because I really don't like the idea. But I mean, just to show and to demonstrate that it's doable, eh, shall I? Shall I try and prove that I can do this? You know what, why not? Fine, command, 
seg um name body user send message as void name well actually at that point we can just because I've been sensible here you can do that and then uh, you don't need a semicolon at the end of there do you so now this could almost become command sig um, and then it's command random body user message sender and that actually works I think um, I don't think this is a good thing to do but I did say it was possible so I wanted to prove that it was possible I don't like it so we won't rank up hold the line this hamlet shall not fall. Thank you very much for that raid, Jitter Ted. How are you doing? Uh, let's get some yappy dog love in chat for the raiders. Uh, we've just been discussing some very, very, very bad C C++ stuff. Yeah, FP Jester, I completely agree with you. Good evening, Joko. Uh, Minxy Rose, can we also have a shout out for Jitter Ted? If you can, please and thank you. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, that's not a use of a macro. Not a really good one. Um, but if you see, say, boost tests um, use macros, you'll see macros use quite a bit and boost catch2 uses them. Um, they do similar things. They do a lot more than just that because with their macros they can pull out things like line numbers. They tend to use them for a good reason. Um, we tend not to. Now, unfortunately, Jitter Ted's done. Jitter Ted. Hi, Jitter Ted. Um, unfortunately, you've caught us very near to the end of this stream. I don't think we're doing too much, uh, too much else. So, we will have to pass a raid forward soon. So, if you've got any good ideas of someone to pass it forward to, please feel free to drop us a, a message in chat. Well, I'll, I'll carry on going for about 10, 15 more minutes, I think, anyway. Uh, Joko, I'm playing coffee. Fee, 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 fee. I'm drinking coffee. I need coffee. I need coffee. I also need cola. <clears throat> yeah, Minxy Rose thought breaking the kitchen would be fun today. She's good at that. Ah, we mean Minxy. Ah, cool. All right, fair enough. I mean, we can extract out other commands very much the same way. Let's let's try one of the big ones. Let's try the horn command and see if it'll come out the same way. Um, so we'll cut it out. There we go. Um, void command horn. Paste that in. Get our signature as well. Um, we go from message body to just being body. We need to see if the user is, the mo is a mod. Well, that's fine. I don't see why that's moaning. Apparently, expression must have pointer type. Yeah, of course, because we need to do that. Do we not? Oh, no, we don't. Because we're passing the actual user through, we can just do a dot there. Clock dot now. We don't have the clock, do we? And do we have a last home? Where are these um, declared? This could be interesting. I think we might have issue. Last horn is that. Ah, yes, because we are in. We are initializing this up here, aren't we? Um, Hmm. <laughs> okay. So we've got a, a a dependency on something a little bit more global. Um. 
So we've got to think about how we're going to deal with timeout with this setup. Um, and throttling is a thing. So we need to look at that a little bit more closely. So let's undo that one for now. Okay, so um, to do look at throw in commands before pulling this one out. Okay. So that one we can't have yet. Let's see, can we have the add command command out? I think we can. Let's try it. <clears throat> ah, Coffee Fairy. I see, Joker. I was going to say Coffee Fear. It made me think of Kavefi. The whole um, Donald Trump sort of tweet thing. No, Coffee Fairy. Yes, Minx has been playing Coffee Fairy this evening in a most wonderful way. So void and command add. Again, I can grab all the um, ah, and this is interesting because this one has a requirement to have all of the commands as well. Um, hmm, so we can't pull that one out yet either, which means we can't pull out the. Hmm, there's more to do here then, isn't there? Um, so we can only really... I mean, we could pull out the welcome command, but we can't pull out the interesting ones. Let's pull out the welcome command, why not? Just because this one I know we can. And again, let's get the function signature right. Uh, message body, well, that's now just body. Um, arguments we need to declare. Um, stud string argument. Cool. And again, the whole sort of registering the welcome command there. And that should again work. Let's just try that one out. So we've got some commands that are going to work nicely for us. So Welcome, Foo, for instance. Welcome to the chat, Foo. Cool, that works. <clears throat> and let's have those at the top. Is that argument ever used anywhere? Yeah, it is. Well, let's at least do something about... Um, I ah, know we do need to have it in here for now, don't we? Um, let's, yeah, we'll keep it there. <clears throat> That's fine. I mean, some of this will require the commands to be in a command repository, things like that, and we'll we'll deal with it in a different way. I do have ideas on how to do that though, but in the meantime, I think that that's good work. Um, let me just stick a to-do in here. Command um, registry with a function export here as a command with uh, management 
functions exported as command. You will notice that each command checks if the bot command is the one we think it is. That's because then we'd be able to pull out that as a command catch all or as a command from database, um, which spins through the commands in the database. So that's kind of why that layer was picked. Um, the other thing I said, and I think we'll do it quickly now, is we've been using an out parameter and a bool. And I think that that's ridiculous when we could actually do, and I don't know why I haven't done this before, std optional, std string, bot command, don't pass in the address to a string. So we go um, return that, otherwise return the null. Hey there, CM Griffin, how are you doing? Uh, welcome on in. Hope you enjoy your stay. Again, we're not going to be on much longer, unfortunately. Um, just doing a bit of tidying up now. So, now that that bot command has an optional, uh, nice to see you lurking. Enjoy your lurk, enjoy your working. Um, can we have a shout out for CM Griffin as well, please, Mingsy Rose, please and thank you. Um, would be most wonderful. So, what do we get now? Well, bot command is taking arguments. All of a sudden here, we don't need to do that. We can just go, if um, arguments equals, and that could be an auto... So again, using exactly the same pattern as we've used before, that needs to be referenced like that. Um, and again, we, we've done this pattern a few times now. So I think we're getting used to it. Um, auto arguments equals that. And again, dereference that. And I think we use it somewhere else. Too many arguments in function call. Yeah, cool. Um, wonder if this would work actually. Um, all right, that probably doesn't. That, however, seems to work. Can the first part of an if fail one, though? Zorkenheimer, you finish your coffee? Oh, no, 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 that's not good. By the way, welcome in, Zorkenheimer. Sorry, I missed that. Um... Sorry, I miss you coming in. How are you doing? Can the first part of the if... For, if this goes false, can I fail the if? Is this what happens? Um, well, there's one way to find out, isn't there? Test it. And again, we, we need to do the dereference everywhere. Because C++. So, in theory... The add command thing should work for me. Uh, let's bring up that database browser. Let's open... Um, can we grab a recent one? Yes, we can. Let's go to that command, uh, that table. So we've got... Oh, the kettle command is still in there, Minxy Rose. It just doesn't seem to be in there when we're running. So if I go add com YouTube... Follow Gareth on YouTube, please. Linked follow. Because I can't remember exactly what the link is. This should actually spit back saying that the command's been added. I ought to add that in. 
assuming that it has and it has um so i'm i'm prepared to say that that probably works um where was the optional the bot command thing yeah because it got the add command so okay an exclamation mark youtube's worked and if i go for yeah minty rose is checking as well if i refresh this we're not adding other commands so yeah i assert that that has worked that's cool um let me delete that one because that's actually not what i wanted to uh, do let me modify this one slightly um Uh, modifying it to at me there, the kettle command sort of tags me so that it flashes up red on my screen. So kettle does that. Oh, hang on. Uh, have I not saved? Oh, no. Of course, I have saved the database, but we've already loaded the commands in. So I need to respin the bot before the kettle update happens. And yo, no, it said no. No more for me today. What's happening? Why is this not saving? Um, Hubblebot, you let me down. Let's have another go. Hubblebot, why you do this? Why are you not loading this up properly? Why are you not? I've. I, do I need to write changes? Is that what I need to do? Because I am more up. And now I can't spell. There we are. Okay. That is how we're going to leave the cattle command, I think. Um, I ought to actually hard code that one so that only Minxy Rose can ask me if I want a coffee. I wonder if I could get it. Yeah, I think I could get Horrible Bot to whisper at me as well. I think I could make that happen. So I could get Minxy Rose to do that. I could even try and whisper commands around. There is so, so much that can be done now. But yeah, we've got to look at Throttle and we've got to look at the command registry. Um, and that's for both of these. Could possibly do with, tr with having a command that reloads from the database um, as well. Just for during testing. But that I'm quite proud of, the fact that we've now got a way of adding those commands. Um, we've got the bot commands thing, so we can just add get a command registry that deals with that. And, well, no, we need a double registry, don't we? Because we need a registry for these commands here. Although if they are, yeah, because these will both just be functions with the same with access to that commands variable, wouldn't they? They'd just be in that same scope. Okay, that's a thing. That's a thing we can do. And we can load them into that scope. In fact, that's the command repository. We could almost actually just use this command repository as a bit more of a... Yeah, because what do we do? We can add a command there. Yeah, we could do something. We could, well, not this command repository. We could have a command registry that hooks into the data access layer. Hmm. This could be the command data access layer. That, that could work. And we could start actually namespacing things a little bit more sensibly. Um, speaking of namespacing sensibly, let's at least... Uh, throw an anonymous namespace around this lot. There we go. That's all namespaced there. And I think, ladies and gentlemen... Our that... community grows. Thank you very much, Nick. Nick, me, mind me, okay? I, I'm pretty sure I've butchered that. Um, please let me know how badly I've butchered that and what I should be um, saying instead, if you will, please and thank you. All right, let's stage those and let's suggest that what we've done is um, 
refactor commands or started started extracting simple commands um what have we done in there um expose display names uh anything else of interest yeah we've changed that cattle command that's nothing much um yeah i think that's all we've really done there so let's commit that lot up that is now all on master as of well probably when you're hearing this but definitely now that is definitely up on on github now um and let me grab up the remote so that i can throw that into chat um Hi there, Fuberius. I'm sorry, I am just about to stop streaming. Uh, make sure you have boost root set is now not right, really, is it? Let's do a quick edit on that. Um, install boost and boost spirit. By uh, um, have we got a link for VC package? VC package, yeah, great stream. Thank you for various or bits. Oh, it's been an interesting one. Let's put it that way. Um, VC package, uh, I don't want to save that, do we? So let's save it this way instead let's commit that directly to master because why not we're we're brave and idiotic here um and i'm gonna quickly fetch and pull just because i don't want to end up with branching and all that yet okay so that branch is down again yeah because we had the update readme.md there and we had to remerge. Wasn't a huge one. Uh, yeah, the video will be on Twitch immediately. Um, and the slightly shortened, i.e., breaks removed variant will be on YouTube in about 24, 48 hours. Just because I'm not allowed to do it immediately, I have to do it um, later. Uh, in the solution folder, that's also wrong. It's in the assets folder, isn't it? Uh, no worries. No worries, Nick. Um, thank you all for being here. Let's go and yeah, I think we need to go and set off a raid pretty quickly, actually. And is anyone online? Yeah, I can't apparently get across to there. Okay. Um, ha! The bot isn't running Minxy Rose. Let's try that again, shall we? When you see Hubblebot is online, give that raid call another shout if you'll please make sure that's not being particularly quick about it. What's going on? Have I broke it? No, it's now online. Issue the raid call again now if you'll please make sure Rose while I try and find us someone to raid. Who are we going to go to today? By the way, before we do, let's pass out some thanks to Matthew D. Groves, the Grumpy Game Dev Viking Coder, Tobo Nautilus, Yakpi Jitter Ted, who needs to be added to that list, Chief CWL, and Calvin A. Allen. Thank you all very much for your hosts and auto hosts this evening. Um, all right, that one is fine. Uh, right, if anyone has any ideas of someone to uh, to raid please let me know ideally looking for someone who does stream development so let me quickly go and have a glance at um, the live coders team to see if anyone else in the live coders is streaming and yet yeah, there are a couple let's pass on the love right so Onistan is streaming um, Codephobia is streaming 
some angular and lucky is streaming view node and c sharp you know what? honest dan is working in unreal 4 so you might see some um you might be lucky you might see some c plus plus at some point let's raid the most honest welshman that we all know um mincy rose has given us all the raid call in chat remember if you have no oh, let's do it this way yeah let's set the raid going if you are a sub please use the emote command version of the command of the raid call if you are not then feel free to use the normal version i am going to copy the sub version because i use it we'll see everybody again on sunday night so yeah that is sunday night we're going to carry on working i think more on the bot let's go and give a great big warm welcome uh, a great big sort of raid over across to Onistan. Thank you very much. Good night.